The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, and welcome to, today, to today's online course, Mindfulness for a Better You. My name is Dr. Godot, and I am a preventive care specialist here at Beaver Medical Group in the Health Education Department. Now, many of you may be asking, what exactly is mindfulness? So let's clear a few things up. Mindfulness is not easy, but yet it is simple. It doesn't always come naturally, and that's why it requires some practice. Mindfulness is not about relaxing. It just means noticing what's happening, even those things that we may find difficult. It's a practice for the whole life. It's about finding a different way to respond to, ex to the experiences that you encounter throughout your day. It's not about emptying your mind. Mindfulness is the moment-to-moment -moment awareness of our thoughts, our feelings, and our external circumstances. It's being present with our experiences in a non-judgmental way because our mind is rarely present in the moments. It's usually thinking about something from the past or worrying about something that may happen in the future. Like right now, your mind probably isn't right here. You may be um, thinking about something else that you may have to do later on after this online course. That's okay. Research suggests that we spend a great amount of time thinking about or replaying the past and another chunk of that time playing or planning or worrying about the future, which hasn't happened yet. Given that the only moment we can do anything about is the one that is in front of us, it is so effective to make sure we're using um, great use of our time. Mindfulness teaches us how to stay and be present in the moment and how to make wise decisions. This kind of work frees up our thoughts and the time that we use um, focusing on the past or worrying about the, the future. So mindfulness basically is being deliberate about finding and experiencing everything to the fullest alone or those or with those that are around you. And I love this little comic. So often we're busy watching out for what's ahead of us that we don't take time to enjoy where we are. And that would, that's what mindfulness is all about, being present in the moment. So when it comes to life, sometimes we are on autopilot. In a car, we can sometimes drive for miles on automatic pilot without really being aware of what we are doing. We often live our lives that same way. We may not be really present moment by moment for much of our lives. On automatic pilot, we are more likely to have our buttons pressed by thoughts, feelings, or even events around us, which can trigger habits of thinking that are harmful and can lead to stress. Mindfulness starts when we recognize the tendency to be on automatic pilot. And we make a commitment to learn how to step out of it, to become aware of each moment so that we can respond to our stressors rather than just re react to them automatically. So what are some of the benefits of mindfulness? Practicing mindfulness provides strategies for calming the mind and also identifying those false beliefs. Researchers have concluded that people who practice mindfulness have a stronger immune system. They're more likely to be happy. They have a greater life satisfaction they're less likely to be hostile or anxious. Additionally, research has found that mindfulness helps people with social abilities as well. And then according to the American Institute of Stress, one million people miss work every day due to stress-related complaints. And nearly half of all American workers suffer from some type of symptoms of burnout or severe job-related stress that impairs or impedes their functioning. So what are some of the benefits of mindfulness for health professionals. It reduces depression, anxiety, and increases empathy. It results in improved care by increased self-monitoring. It decreases burnout by combating emotional exhaustion. It increases quality of life by reducing stress and increasing compassion for oneself. So let's go over a few mindfulness exercises. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is mindful breathing, and then mindful observation, mindful awareness, mindful listening, mindful immersion, and mindful appreciation. Now, most of us don't always have five minutes to sit down and relax, let alone 30 minutes or more for meditation. But it is essential for our well-being to take a few minutes each day to cultivate mental spaciousness and receive a positive mind-body experience. So the first one we're going to go over is mindful breathing. All day, every day, we are gathering and absorbing information from the outside world, just like a sponge. Meditation or deep breathing is one way to kind of just wring out that sponge. 
sponge, squeezing out whatever we don't need, allowing for a refreshing pause of the mind and a reservoir of calm for the emotions. It kind of helps you press the reset button on your mind. It trains the brain to just or the mind to just settle down, to let go of, go of that extra mental clutter and focus on the present moment. It connects the mind with the body. So let's try it. Find a comfortable position position for you, whether it's lying down on your back or sitting up or um, standing up or sitting down. Your spine should be erect, but it shouldn't be rigid. Be still and just focus on your breath. Start by breathing in and out slowly. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Just allowing your breath to flow out effortlessly in and out of your body. Again, just breathe in and breathe out. And as you continue to breathe, just tune into the sensations of your body and focus your intention on the feel of your breath coming in and coming out. And when your mind starts to wander, that's okay. Just get gently guide it back to the attention of your breath. Let go of things that you have to do later today or pending projects or things that you're worried about. Just focus on being present right here in this moment, enjoying the beauty of breathing in and breathing out. And the next one is mindful observation. When we are rushing from here to there, we are often very disconnected from the present. And thus, we feel even more anxious and even more stress. It's a very simple but very powerful tool because it is designed to connect us to our natural environment. So what you do is just choose a natural object from within your environment. So whether you're in your office or if you're at home, you just choose something that's on your desk or in your living room that you can focus on watching just for a minute or two. And you don't do anything except notice the thing that you're looking at. And you just simply relax into a harmony for as long as your concentration allows, whether it's one minute or two. And you look at it as if you're seeing it for the very first time. Where You really look at it and you examine it and notice the beauty of it or the simplicity of it or, the, or how the patterns may be in that particular object. And visually explore every aspect of its formation. Allow yourself to be consumed by its presence. So let's try it here. When you look at this picture, what do you see? I see two cute little boys who are happily painting their parents' truck, a beautiful bright red color. And in doing that, it just gives you a little distraction from your everyday concerns or problems or assignments or tasks, and you just enjoy that moment. You just enjoy that picture and you just sit in it. So the next one is mindful awareness. Um, it allows you to have an appreciation for everyday tasks and the results that they, achieve, they, that they achieve. So think of something that happens every day for you more than once, something that you perhaps take for granted, such as opening your front door. We call this a touch point cue. At the very moment you touch the doorknob to open the door, stop for a moment. And be mindful of where you are, how you feel in that moment, and where that door is going to lead you. Similarly, the, the moment you open your computer to start your work, do the same thing. Take a moment to appreciate the hands that enable this process and the brain that facilitates your understanding of how to use the computer. Little things that we take for granted because we're so in a rush and we're so, so trying to do this or accomplish that, that we're not even aware of those little things that go unnoticed that we should take the time to be aware of. And the touch point cues don't necessarily have to be physical ones. Each time you think a negative thought, you might choose to take a moment to stop and label that thought as unhelpful and release that negativity. Every time you smell food, take a moment to stop and appreciate how blessed you are to have good food to eat and to share it with your family and friends. Today, choose a touch point that resonates with you. Instead of going through your daily motions on autopilot, take occasional moments to stop and cultivate purposeful awareness of what you are doing and the blessings it brings to your life. And the next mindfulness activity is mindful listening. 
Close your eyes and turn on your music player and neutrally, neutrally allow yourself to get lost in the journey of the sound for the duration of the song. Really listen to it. Allow yourself to explore every single aspect of the song. Even if it's not your favorite song or your favorite type of music, let go of that dislike and give your awareness full permission to climb inside the song and dance among the sound waves and listen to every instrument that's being played. The idea is not just to listen, but to become fully entwined with the, with the music without judgment of the artists or the lyrics or the instrument. And then mindful immersion. Mindful immersion is to cultivate contentment in the moment and escape the persistent striving we find ourselves caught up in on a daily basis. Rather than anxiously waiting to finish a task in order to get on and do something else, um, Fully experience it like you've never before. If you're cleaning your house, pay attention to every detail of your activity. Rather than treating um, something as a regular chore, create a new experience by experiencing every aspect of, of your chore. Feel and become the motion when you're sweeping the floor. Sense your muscles that you use when you're scrubbing the dishes. Develop a more efficient way of wiping the windows clean. The idea is to get creative and discover new experiences within a familiar routine task. And then one of my favorite ones is, is mindful appreciation. It's when you take the time to notice five things in your day that usually go unappreciated. These things can be objects or it could be people. The point of this exercise is to simply give thanks and appreciate the insignificant things in your life or the things that seem insignificant. But these things actually support your existence, but rarely get a second thought amidst, amidst our desire for bigger and better things. So really taking the time to just cultivate an attitude of gratitude. So you can cultivate a mindful appreciation by keeping a gratitude journal. Every night, write down three things that went well that day and why they went well. These, these three things don't have to be important. Um, there was a study done by uh, Robert Emmons of UC Davis and Mike McCullough of the University of Miami, and they looked at the impact of keeping a gratitude journal. And they found that after 10 weeks, those who wrote about gratitude were actually more optimistic and felt bad, better about their lives. They also exercised more and had fewer visits to the doctor than those who focused on their stressors. Thinking too much about what's going wrong in our lives can actually lead to anxiety and depression. And if you find that journaling doesn't suit you, Make the practice your own. Speak or silently contemplate your blessings instead of writing it down. Make it a part of your evening ritual. Do it, do it on a different way that feels more natural. Do it a different way that feels more natural to you. So mindfulness is being present in the moment because when we spend too much time reliving the past, we begin to feed our worries about the future. When you spend too much time in the future, you dwell on the worst case scenarios. And I love this quote. It says, if you're depressed, it's because you're living in the past. If you're anxious, it's because you're living in the future. But if you're at peace, it's because you've learned how to live in the present. So everyday mindfulness is taking the time to just slow down, to listen more, to observe more, to talk less, to focus on your breath during your activities to reduce multitasking by just taking time to do one thing at a time and being present in that one activity, to learn how to relax into a feeling of calm presence when you're around others, and then using routine events such as the phone ringing to remind you to be present in the moments, or using um, your meals to help you to be mindful and reflect on where that food came from. Mindfulness is about simply simplifying your life. So, in conclusion, you will continue to suffer if you have an emotional reaction to everything that is said to you. True power is sitting back and observing everything with logic. True power is restraint. If words can control you, that means everyone else can control you. Breathe and allow things to pass. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation and I thank you for sitting in on today's webinar. If you want future information on webinars that are occurring this month as well as next month, please feel free to email me at the email below or call us at 909-335-4131. Thank you and have a wonderful day.